and welcome back to the channel folks good to have you here so today we'll be carving this little guy good gnome right with a nice red hat long gray beard i like him he's carved on a uh, one and a half inch by one and a half inch block that's cut in the diagonal and we're gonna do this little face here i like these ones that hide the eyes like that so like i said we're gonna start with this one and a half inch by one and a half inch block and we cut it on a diagonal like so another piece here for the other side and see how it looks before. you don't have to cut this with a bandsaw like i did you could just take a chisel and hit it with a hammer right at the top and split it or you could take a handsaw and cut it either way you do it or however you choose to do it that uh see there's an inch and a half right there originally that's a four inch long block that we're using in total and we're going to carve a gnome out of this guy now, I like those carvings where they hide the eyes. I think they, they're they just, they're cute in a way that I like, right? I do Santas that way, and I like doing gnomes that way. Uh, plus, for a newer carver, eyes are hard for a newer carver. So, why not just skip them for right now? Let's just go with something a little bit more fun. I'll show you guys how to do a nose, a nose with some character. So, we're going to do a hat like so with a little kink in it at the top right there. And uh, take a look at the overlay on the left, and you'll see what I'm talking about with that kink. Just uh, make these lines a little bit heavier so you can see them easier when I hold up the camera. And uh, we're going to do a beard and nose. The nose is going to stop right there, and the beard will come down like that around the edges. That'll look pretty good. Some cheeks up there. And these markings are just to help guide me as I rough it out. So we're going to start by taking these sharp corners off this. When you cut a block of the diagonal like that, those edges are nice and sharp and they're rough on the hand. They don't feel comfortable. And I carved to relax, so I'm not going to be letting myself be uncomfortable. Let's take all those sharper edges off, make it a little bit easier on us. Those bottom ones too, there we go. And straighten this one out a little bit as well. There we are. Okay. So we're going to start by putting some roundness to that cap, start coming to that point at the top, and then we'll round it over once we get it up there. I've got a new microphone today, so uh, my voice sounds a little bit different. That is why. As we carve this thing over here, we're, we're like, like I said, we're rounding it off that top. That end grain is hard to carve through sometimes. That's where you find out how well stropped your knife is. I've said this before and I'll say it again. Remember this, the number one reason that new carvers give up or quit is because their knife isn't sharp enough. Let's drop more, strop off. That corner there, our hat's got kink over. We're carving up and around it. So we're gonna do a V cut underneath that little kink there to create it right. So, it's out, it's that little corner we're gonna do. We'll come in at an angle right here and then we'll come up to meet it. Like so, and then we're just going to deepen that V cut into the side here two or three times we need to until we like how deep it is. Let's get in there, clean out that corner a little bit, and round that up. Looking better. Now let's round this top off a bit more. And we're starting to get that funny little gnome hat going and you should always be looking at your carving letting your carving dictate where you carve next like i may look at this and say oh i need to take a little bit off right there to carve that out a little bit and a little bit more now we're going to start working on the bottom of the cap we're going to put lines on the side here and you can do it straight like push in just like so or you can kind of draw it with the tip of the knife like this i like drawing it a little bit better on a wider section and then we're just going to cut right up to it and stop there chip it out like a, a longer v cut just along the whole length of carving there if it doesn't come loose easy just kind of draw your blade along that line the tip of the blade and let it cut that chip out and just keep deepening that line and then we'll do another one on the other side the same way there we go just keep taking out a little bit at a time you don't take out too much at once. Taking out too much at once is how people risk cutting themselves. 
because they risk losing control of their knife by pushing too hard or pulling too hard. A little bit at a time, slow and steady. There's a reason they call it whittling away at something, right? All right, now we're going to jump over here to the other side as well. Same thing. I'm just going to draw that line with the tip of the blade. And then we're going to stop cut right up to it and pull out those little chips. Do a couple of cuts to get the depth that you need and try to match the depth on the other side. Nice and easy. Just like that. Do a couple slices at once and just cut it out. Like that. Not too hard. Just a little bit at a time. I mean, it didn't talk about it on the other side, but we're going to chip out a little corner underneath the edge of the hat on this one, on this side too. We did it on the first side. It's like that right there. And, uh, yeah. We got a good start going right here. Now we got those saw marks on here along the edges of the front base. We're going to try to take those saw marks off. Okay. Our flat plane. Peel those off. Take that hard edge off the front of the hat. Round it over. And we're going to keep going with that. We're going to keep trying to take off those saw marks. Ooh, went a little bit deep there, but that's okay. We can just deepen the line on the hat here in the front. Won't do that once we get these saw marks off. The saw marks, if you leave them when you're carving, will soak up stain and paint differently than the areas that have met the blade. So you don't want to leave them behind because they will change the way your carving looks when finished. Okay, see so right there I started carving in and the grain direction started pulling that knife deeper. So carving downward here wasn't the right move. We're going to carve the opposite direction and take it off this way. Pay attention to your wood. Your wood will tell you how to carve it. The grain runs vertically on this piece up and down and if you carve between the grains can kind of do that where it kind of pulls the knife deeper we don't want to do that we want to carve and cut through the grain not between the grain we're just going to keep peeling it off this way and i cut kind of deep there so we're just going to take a little bit off at a time until we get it all done right and right here at the bottom part i can just side cut that to get it off there that line's still there a little bit so let's go ahead and go a little bit deeper try to Peel that off. Just a little bit of time. Get that gone. There we go. And now you'd never even know that happened. All right. So let's deepen this like we said we were going to. I took a little bit too much off there. And we're just going to go ahead and fix it. Like that. A little bit more. That's looking a lot better. Get the last piece off. All right, and we've got a good start going right there. Now we can start working on more of this kink in the hat. We've got a little V cut up here to deepen that. Not all the way down, all the way through, just on the front portion to make it look like that hat has got some depth to it, you know? Like so. Might do it again. Curve that out a little bit, round those off. Starts to look like a hat. It's kind of flopped over now. Take these sharp edges off here. That's significantly better. I like that. All right, so now we're going to start with the nose. Now, on the nose, we're going to come in at a pretty straight angle, maybe a little bit angled downward slightly, just ever so slightly like so. And then we're just going to push straight down. Now, the blade's not level left to right. You know, so we're on an angle a little bit. I like to put a little bit of a cant on the nose. I don't like to do it completely straight because no nose is ever completely straight on a face. It's always canted one way or the other depending on what expression is on our face and what we're doing with our face. If we're grimacing, if we're grinning, if we're, if we're yelling, if we're screaming, if we're jumping for joy, that expression on our face changes how our nose looks. Straight push cut down in and a V cut kind of up to it, slicing cut up to it. Then to put the nostrils in, we're going to come in at an angle on the left and right side. So 
So we're going to go a little bit off center and just come straight down like that. Let me give you a better view. That was two quick cuts there I just did. Let's see what the results are. Let's do a closer look here, right? That like that. The first cut we're going to do is at this angle right here, a little bit off center. I'm going to go straight down so I'm level with the, ori the original cut, like that flat plane there. And then I come in under it like this, right up there, and knock that chip out. And clean up that spot right there. So now I got a little flat spot in the original V cut in the middle, and then it's angled up on the left and right. And now we're gonna sweeping cut the top here to bring that nose down a little bit. Let's go ahead and sweep cut more. So it kind of curves down. Some exaggerated motion here, like sweeping like so. Curving it down and in to the top of the hat to give that kind of a look right there to the nose. Now, this next part, <clears throat> to make a nostril, I would normally use a gouge, but I'm going to show you how to do it with a knife, because it could be a knife-only carving. So I'm going to show you one nostril with a gouge, and how I might normally do it, and this is just a, uh, a U-gouge, a file tool, let me show you, show you that profile if I can. It's a curved gouge, right? And I'd come in right here along that flat edge right there of the nose. And that would be where one side of the gouge would be. And same thing on the other side. I would come straight down in to make that channel right here, right? We're going to do that with a knife. I'm going to show you how to do one nostril with a knife. And then the other nostril will do the gouge just to show you what we can do. So I'm going to come in and immediately curve it back up. So a little straight cut right there. And then I'm going to curve it around and down like that. I'll need to cut the bottom out. Maybe this is the type of cut we did here. This is a, a hard manure to do when you're new. Take your time. A little bit at a time. Maybe I get it. You see that roundness in there? On the other side, we're going to do with a gouge. And it's just as simple as pushing it into place, and then cutting loose the bottom chip. Super easy for the gouge, right? And you can see the two nostrils now, like so. This one's a little rough there. The knife, the gouge is perfect, but I can clean that up with a knife. Make it look just right. Take that little rough part off. And there, that's phenomenal. Absolutely phenomenal. So you can do it with a knife, or you can do it with a gouge, but we're doing this up with a knife on this carving. Knife only. We're sticking with a knife. So the rest of it's just be a knife. I just want to show you that so you can see what it was like. Now, for the nostril, on the edge of it, we're going to do a cut right here. Like a V cut. A curved V cut, kind of. And it comes from about the middle of the nostril all the way back and around. And you can make this wider and bigger and just make a bigger nose. We're going to do it straight down in with the tip and we're just going to curve it down with a straight down cut straight into the wood into the heart of the wood and then we're going to curve out the left and right with separate cuts little V cuts to form that nostril so now that I got that in place we're going to do a V cut right here get our blade down to the tip of that channel and just cut a little chip out and we do the same thing on the other side a V cut down to the tip where we were and ship that out and you can see we got the, the right side of that nostril done pretty well same thing on the other side just a V cut with the tip of our blade going down into that original channel angle down into it and then on the other side as well and shipping that out Smooth up the line if you don't get it just right. And just brush clean them up. And there we go. So we've got a pretty good nose now. It's defined more, right? And now to add the cheeks in, we're going to go from that corner of the nose just to round over. And this will be another curved kind of V cut. We'll draw it once with the knife, and then we'll come in a little bit angled to the left and a little bit angled to the right. To V cut that out, that channel, and then we'll have both our cheeks done too. 
change this one here. That one wasn't quite as wide as the other one. And play around with this. You can make these cheeks wide and fat or short and narrow. And the more you play around with it, the more you'll see you can get different types of characters out of this, different types of gnomes. So just straight down to the heart of the wood and curve it around. And the same thing to the other side, straight down in and curve it around. Right at the edge of the nose. And then we're going to come in angle from the left and right, or from the top and bottom, depending on your perspective. For each of these, be cut that little channel out, and they'll do the same thing in the other direction, like this. And that gives us a little definition to that cheek. And you can already see it there coming together. It's starting to look like a face, isn't it? Alrighty, now let's do the other side. Angled in and cut that line out and cut that chip out right there. And then from the top, angled in towards that original cut. It's the same type of cut we did in the nostril, just longer, less of a curve. But that gives us that cheek right there. And we're about to be working on a beard, folks. We're doing pretty good. A little bit to clean up right here, though. So let's just come back in here and clean up that corner of that nose. I says before, I'll say it again. Watch your carvings, and they will tell you where to carve. All right, so to carve this beard, we're probably going to need to trim some more off the front. But the gist of it will be we're going to start from the corners of the nose and come down the outside of our mustache. And from the middle of the nose, come down with the inside up one side mustache. Same spot for the left side. And from the outside nostril for that side. And we'll leave the bottoms of it open and kind of blend it into the beard. We're gonna take this hard edge out right here first. Gonna shave that off. And we'll redraw the lines as needed. So that we can have a little bit easier. Let's take these hard edges off right through here too and just curve it around. Then we can start with it a curved surface to carve the beard onto. And it'll just be a little bit easier. We're not doing it after. We can use these lines we're drawing. It's easy reference. Because we're gonna draw our mustache pretty much on point where the lines are gonna be. And a little bit this side too. There we go. Okay, so let's redraw. We need to for that mustache right through here leave the bottom open that's pretty good and from that right side nose left side nostril right at the edge of that nostril okay and we'll... that looks good now this is a straight in cut but my right hand isn't actually moving it's the carving that I'm moving my right hand and the knife are staying level on the desk and I'm pivoting this carving up because I'm con controlling the knife more that way, right? You get cut when they lose control of the knife and it goes into their skin. And I don't want to lose control of the knife. So I'm just slowly rotating this carving around a little bit on these cuts here. But I'm going to slowly rotate that carving up by pushing down on the knife blade with my thumb. Like so. And you can do some of these harder cuts without endangering yourself as much control that blade and you won't cut yourself all right so we got those lines in now on the outside edge of the mustache we're going to come in up here towards the cheek and just cut this big chip out right like so and that will start to define the outside edge of that mustache the same thing same direction on the other side right down up that cheek to define that edge and now in this middle portion we're going to do this massive kind of V cut pyramid cut I guess you could say we'll go in on one side push the knife in nice and firm hard and deep on the other side and then we're going to cut out this triangle here on the middle cut it a little bit 
deeper. Deeper is always, always good. Take a look at what you can do with it. Get deeper and deeper on these beards, and you will be surprised how much you like it. Carve corner off this mustache. We're going to curve it up right here, all the way up to the nose, and I'll smooth it out a little bit. We'll do the same thing on the other side. And smoothing these mustaches off, like so, really brings the carving to life. And the inside of the mustache as well, same thing. Or pay attention to your wood grain from which direction you're going to carve from. Now this one, I carve this little section off right here from this direction. And pay attention to what you might need to clean up. Do I need to clean up an edge here or there? Go ahead and do that now if you need to. Well, this guy's looking pretty good. Now we're gonna take these hard corners off here. We're going to round the beard. Gonna round that around there. We really take those saw marks off the bottom. Some folks on these types of carvings that are carving the half shell need to they like to leave that bottom. and I, I don't like that at all. I like to carve it smooth. That's going to be a nice round beard. So yeah, we'll carve this thing smooth here, bringing the base of the beard here inward, like so. And we'll take all the way back, that flat plane in the back of the carving if you can. Take these big chunks using my left thumb as a fulcrum to propel myself through this. I'm going to do a paring cut here and slice off this bottom section. Now my left thumb is out, of, my right thumb is out of the way, it's down beneath the knife here, okay? I'm just using it to push the carving through. Now I'm not pulling the knife through, I'm pushing the carving through. You don't want to be doing big cuts, sweeping cuts with the blade. You should be doing controlled cuts with the blade, keeping control of the blade. And newer carvers should absolutely be wearing carving gloves. I'm trying to get these chips out of the way here. So we got a good start on this carving, but now we're going to add some details to the beard. So to do that, we're going to add some lines in. I'm just going to put this knife in here and draw the blade down into my cutting mat. Now we're going to do a nice beat cut here, from the one side diagonally in towards that base of that cut, like so, and then we'll do, do the same thing from the other side as well. First we're going to do a beat cut here at the base, to separate out that hairline there, huh? Got a good chunk to really separate it, show a delineation there. Now we'll do that beat cut paring cut here. I'm going to use this rough out knife like a detail knife. At the tip of every rough out knife, the detail knife, I'm going to hold it here choked up on the blade a bit so I can use that thing like a detail knife. Like so. Now I got that blade folded in my fingers like that so I'm not hurting myself, not cutting myself. And it gives me very much more control over the blade. Do the paring cut again, choking up on that knife. Carve that corner off like so. All right, let's do a couple more of those to add a little bit more depth to this beard. So we'll do this one right here. Nice straight line. We're going to carve right down to the carving mat. There we go. And then we're going to, on the left side, angled in, take out a good chunk. We do the same thing from the right side, or we can Pairing cut. First, I'll be cut at the bottom to separate it out. Be gentle. Take your time. Don't lose control of the knife. Plan your cuts. Push accordingly and know. Oh, there I'm starting to split the wood as I come in there. That's okay. We can fix that. Let's rip that off. You need to pay attention to your wood direction. And we'll take the paring cut here, choke up with a knife, and I'm going to cut in this direction to peel off that tear, clean it up. If we make mistakes on carvings, that's going to happen. 
and some of the best carvings come from mistakes that we had to correct. I have got a lot of carvings done that I made a mistake on and just pushed through and that mistake turned out to be a really neat feature because of what I had to do to correct it. That's what we're going to do here. We're just going to cut off that excess. Still going to go for a nice deep delineation between the sections of beard. It's going to look great. It's going to look great. Put it again. Smooth this section out right through there. Just like so. And it's my, my thumb that's pushing that carving up. The knife isn't moving so much. It's my thumb pushing the carving. That's why I'm not hitting my thumb on the knife. I'm pushing the carving through and through the knife towards, my, not my thumb, towards the blade, I should say. Now here we're doing a uh, kind of undercutting this hair here. And the carver, my local carving club, Mike Short, he gave me that tip. It's a really great effect when you kind of undercut those V-cut sections between the beards. Let's do another one of those right over here on the side. And we'll do one on the other side as well. That'll probably be good for this guy. But you can add a lot more of these in. You can add less. If you don't like the way they look, don't add them in. V-cut in from one side and uh, add that V-cut the base. Separate that hair out that up a little bit too, a little deeper in there, put some depth to it, let's do that again, some depth going up into that, that looks great, look at that, do the same thing here on the other side, start the base in this one and V cup on this side first, put that in at the top, and V cut here at the bottom to separate that out, That's looking great, huh? Starting to look like a nice little gnome. Undercut the bottom side of this one. And I think that, uh, yeah, I think we're looking like we like it. Now we should try to paint this little guy here. He won't be complicated to paint, but uh, do some weathering on him. But we're gonna deepen up here in the mouth. Under that mustache, let's make that a little bit deeper. Take out more of that triangle. I'll put more shadow to it. Yeah, just a little bit deeper. Get a little bit more shadow there. Now, on this guy here, we put this uh, little kinked over floppy hat, but I've done Santa Clauses same way it's a different style hat you can see this one's leaning over to the side a little bit more and it's got a little ball on the end of it too but it's the same basic carving you can make all kinds of guys like this you can put a, you know, a seaman's cap on him i've got several santas here and you can see like the mustache is just like canted over to the side a little bit as one side of the nostrils up higher on this one the beard shaped a little bit differently you can just continue to change this up and uh get a lot of carvings out of this this mustache here if you if you curve it right you can put a cigar in there this guy's got a bigger nose i mean look at that schnoz it's huge and that's just starting that first cuff of the nose down a lot lower and making those cheeks a bit bigger than we did on this guy we made this one a lot smaller than than him but you can do a lot with this type of carving you don't just make a gnome you can make all kind of things you might want we can put a magnet on the back of him, and he can be uh, a refrigerator magnet, or we can put an, an ornament hook on the top of him, he can be a crystal tree ornament, or we can make him a uh, rear view mirror hanger. Um, you have these ornament hooks like this, and you can get these from Hobby Lobby, or whatever hobby store you have, or Amazon, and pretty easy to use. It's a tiny little eye bolt, and they can just screw into the top with the carving. I don't even drill a hole or anything. I just put it in and start turning. When I put that in yet, we're gonna paint this guy up first. I just wanna give you options for how you might display a carving like this. 
Okay, next up we're gonna paint this guy. And uh, we're gonna go with some simple. We got some little water and an eyedropper. And uh, we're gonna go with simple colors. We're gonna go with this nice bright red, gray, white, and we'll probably use a little bit of black as well. The gray and the white will be for the beard, the red will be for the hat, and it'll be nice and simple. Um, this is just regular full color paint. It's not uh, anything expensive. It's just the stuff that you get from Hobby Lobby. Nothing fancy. Shake up a little bit of red we're going to put in this uh, paint tray I've got. And for the carving itself, we just finished carving this. I haven't wetted it down or tried to brush it off or clean it. I always wet down carvings before I use them. So this is the paint tray we're going to be using. And I'm just going to be using a cheap regular paintbrush. Nothing fancy about it either. This is just one from Hobby Lobby and I'm getting a pack of multiples. And before I paint a carving, I like to wet them down and clean them. This guy's dry, so we're going to wet him down in this little thing of water here. Just like that. And I'm just going to rub all the surface where I carved on him. And that really is a wonder for any imperfections that you might have left in the carving with the knife blade, with the knife tip, any rough spots or rough edges. It's good to go ahead and clean them up and uh, rub them out. I'll do it by hand rubbing on the carving like this or I'll use a toothbrush and I'll brush the nose uh, the underside of the <clears throat> the nostrils the mouth the underside of the cheeks as well the beard all like this and just kind of clean it up and you'd be amazed at the knife marks that get healed by that by having a wet carving now the downside of having a wet carving with it wet with water is that your paint is going to bleed a little bit and you'll see what we do to correct that and how we get around that because painting is a lot easier than people think it is and the issues they have with painting aren't as dire as they might think they can be so we're going to see some bleed with this we know that going in but we're going to go ahead and do it anyway now I'm going to wet the paintbrush go with some red paint and I usually water my paint down, water my paint down on the carving itself, not beforehand. So you can already see it's a nice bright red. And as I do it right along this edge here, you can see it going down into the carving and coming out of the cheek a little bit. It is already doing that along that edge. And that's because the carving's wet. And it can do that if it's dry too bleed like that. Now to fix that you can soak it in BLO, boiled linseed oil, prior to carving. Um, outside of that you can use a wood burner and burn a line there and that'll keep it from spreading. Or you can just use a knife and make a really deep cut right there and that will help to keep it from spreading but it can still spread. Outside of that you can just say you know what I'm just gonna deal with it. I'm just going to deal with the fact that it bled a little bit and I'm going to fix it as I go. Maybe I'll use a little beige for the skin and uh, we'll take care of it. It's not that big of a problem. You can correct it. And that's why we're doing it this way. I just want to show you that it's not a big problem. That way folks don't have to worry that they might have ruined a carving. I'll show you ways of fixing things like that so you can move past it. Just going to see look how much it bled in on the back there. Wow. The wet carving is really soaked down those lines, like so. I'm just messing around right now. But uh, anyway, you get the point. So we're done with that paintbrush now. We got the red done. Use the hair dryer, and I'm gonna dry this up real quick. And there, it's all dry now. Dry to the touch. Next up, we're gonna use this gray here for the beard, and we're just gonna go ahead and uh, wash the whole beard. Now, same thing. This carving is more dry now than it was because we used the hair dryer on it to dry the hat. But we're just gonna do a gray wash. Get all this red out of the paintbrush. There we go. And then we'll dip the wet paintbrush in the gray. Get it in there good. Get some water on it. And we're just gonna wash this whole bottom half of the carving. All this beard is gonna be washed gray. Be careful along the cheekbone to make sure you don't get any gray on the cheeks. But everywhere else is fair game. All the nooks and crannies underneath the nose, 
all the way down. Just coat the whole thing. One wash of gray. More paint, more water. Get down in that mouth cavity like that. Out to this edge and down. Whole thing. And I don't notice on the subject of paints a difference between Apple Barrel or Folk Art or any of the brands. I have multiple different brands in my tray here in the bin in the back and I don't notice any difference whatsoever in the brand of paint when it comes to carvings that I'm doing. And I'm watering down paints and using paints all the time. So whatever brand you get it's probably going to work just fine. Whether it's from Walmart whatever brand they have, or Hobby Lobby, or whatever craft store you went to. There we go. That's looking pretty good. We got a nice gray beard. Now we're gonna be texturing and dry brushing. So we're going to be dry brushing white over this beard. So it's gonna look a good bit different than it does right now when we're finished. This is just a single color wash as a base. Same thing with the hat. I'm gonna clean this brush out. That's a little bit of red there, so I'm going to go ahead and fix that right now under that edge right there. And then we will use the hair dryer to dry this guy up again so we can move on to the next step. Okay, with him all dry, that step's done. Now, what we're going to work on next here, we're going to use that, that beige I talked about because we had that bleed through on the face there, a little bit of red. So we're going to use some watered down beige and uh, go ahead and paint the face. We've got that bleed through right through, right through there. You can see it pretty good. And we're not going to worry about getting too crazy with it, but I don't want all that red left there because it's going to look bad. This is we got to fix it. We're going to take a little bit of beige and we're just going to draw that right there across that, put a little bit of paint there, and then wipe the excess off. We don't have too much on there. We want it to be a very thin layer right up the top of the hat, right down to the bottom of the cheekbone, and over here to the nose. If you have too much paint, wipe it off on your cloth nearby. Don't leave it on the carving. Leaving a heavy paint job can look pretty bad on a carving, makes it look plasticky. So you want to wipe this as thin as you can while still covering whatever bleed through is there. And then you might need to rotate it to get underneath that nose, into that nostril. Because even though this heart didn't have a bleed through, we want it to be an even look. So we want this to be the same shade as the cheeks up there. And we are going to texture a little bit later by adding some shadowing. But uh, we'll get, do that, cross that bridge when we come to it. Right now we're just working on the little bit of beige. And that crack right there, with a tiny little bit. And our nose is looking pretty good. We're about to be dry brushing soon, I think. Alrighty. What do you guys think? You like that? I think it's nice. Hair drying time. Go ahead and dry this thing off. Okay, now we've got our carving dry. We're going to be looking at dry brushing. <clears throat> we're going to use this white and we're going to dry brush across the entire beard. Now, <sighs> dry brushing is not as complicated as people think it is. And the right paintbrush really makes a world of difference on how easy it can be. <clears throat> you want something that has some good loose bristles but not too loose like this oval mop I have is what I use from Master's Touch and it's a half inch oval mop I got this from Hobby Lobby you can see it's got it's very weathered very used and we're just gonna get a clean spot here on this napkin and I'm gonna fill the brush up with white paint I'm dabbing in there make sure I get plenty of white paint into the brush deep into it and I'm just going to wipe it off on the cloth here, paper towel, until it's not really wiping anything else off. When the paint is almost gone from the paintbrush, not all the way gone, but almost, that's when I'm going to start dry brushing the carving. It's right about here. And just lightly brushing across the surface. 
the cut lines from your knife are going to be the first thing to pick up that paint. The cut lines and then you just push in a little bit harder and you'll leave a light sheen of white across that surface of gray. And the look is absolutely fantastic. It looks weathered, it looks aged. It looks like a gray beard that you might see on a face. It looks the right way gray, not just a bland, flat gray. It looks alive. It looks like it's done right. And it's really coming together. We're gonna get down to these cracks here, dry brushing into those, into that mouth cavity, out of the bone of the nose. And look at that. It's a stark contrast versus the flat gray that was originally there. And we can dry brush the hat next. And we're gonna do that with a brighter color. First a little hair dryer, dry the beard out. Now the beard was just dry brushing, but the hat we're gonna actually texture. And that, that's kind of like what I call dry brushing and then dry brushing the original color back on top of it. So there's a layer of another color in between. And you, that layer that you do in between, you, you want, want it to be a brighter color. So we're gonna go with something brighter. We can do any color we want to, whether it be pink or purple, as long as it's brighter than that red. But we might go with maybe an orange. Maybe, maybe let's go a little bit a little bit darker than that. It's like a pumpkin kind of orange here. There is it. At? There it is. Okay, we'll go with this color here. A yellowish kind of, kind of a gold, I guess, autumn gold. We'll do this onto the hat, and then dry brush red over this dry brushing, and that's going to create a texture that's going to be really neat when you when it finishes up. But when we texture this stuff on. Your first thought is going to be, oh my God, Johnny, what have you done? This carving looks terrible. Why are you trying to encourage me to do this? I get it. <laughs> I know. It happens every time to me too. I think, oh my gosh, I'm ruining this. And it happens the moment I start dry brushing some strange color in something when I'm texturing. But bear with me. Trust that I know what I'm doing here and uh, you'll see the finished product. Actually, you know what? I'll just cheat. Here's the overlay. Take a look at that. As you can see on the hat, on the overlay there, the red isn't just a flat red, right? If we left a flat red, it would be okay. It's all right. It's fair. But if we do something extra, we add some texture, we add some layers. It is just amazing how good a carving can look. Now this, same thing for wipe off most of the paint, wipe off all the excess, and then we're just lightly brushing across the surface this yellow gold. And you can see it's looking dirty. It looks well, not good. Look at the overlay. That's what we're going to wind up as. And this is just a step in the process, a step between where it doesn't look great, where it looks like a hot mess, but we're going to fix it. We're going to fix it and it's going to look great. Okay, so we got that dry brushing in place. We'll dry this up. And after it's dry, we'll go back and we'll dry brush the same color as the base coat over this just a little bit lighter. We won't push as hard as we did with the with the gold here. And we'll let some of that gold shine through. And it'll be a really neat effect. So, a little, little hair dry time. Okay, so we're now going to clean out our brush. Get all that yellow out of the brush as best we can. Because we're going to be using a, a red now. Carving's dry again. And we're going to get ready to dry brush that red in right across the top and then we'll do a little shadowing after that so a little bit more red more rouge and we're going to do the same thing we just fill up our paintbrush with this red here make sure we get rid of the deep in the bristles and then we're just wiping off the excess until we see it barely coming off and the red's really easy to see so it's perfect for the video because you can see how much I have left. I'm going to fold this over, find a clean spot where I can keep going. I want a dry spot when it's not wet too. There we go. So it's getting there. Alrighty, now we're just going to be dry brushing this red on. Not too heavy, lightly. So you can see the gold through the red. 
And the hat will look red. It'll look definitely red, but it'll look textured. It'll look vibrant. It'll look real in a way that that flat red, left alone originally, would not look. All right, now let's add some detail to this guy. I'm going to use these styluses, and you can use whatever you want to. You don't have to use this. You could use the tip of a toothpick if you want to, or whatever you got available. These are some styluses I got off of Amazon, and they're just balls on the ends of sticks. And I'm going to use these to draw a little pattern, a little white paint on the side of the hat right here. One big dot in the middle. I'm going to do three little satellite dots around the outside edge of it. And a little detail like this, I think, goes a long way towards bringing a little bit of life into a carving. And I really like this pattern, too. I think it's neat. It's fun. Right there. A little decoration for his hat, you know. He's a gnome with some style. That's what he is. And more hair drying time. Okay, he's dry again, and now we're going to get the, the black out. We talked about shadowing a moment before. And we're going to use black to do that, to highlight all our lines and the deep cuts. And this is just one of those things that's easy to do, people don't think to do, but it really sets the carving apart. And the way I do it might not be the way everyone else does it. So I got barely a drop here, a tiny drop of black. And I'm going to use this dirty paint water. And I'm just going to put a bunch of it on this uh, top here. And then we're going to mix it in. Now I'm probably going to add some more water. We're just going to start mixing that black. Because we don't need it to be real black. We need it to be just dirty black. I don't know how else to put it. More water. More cowbell. More cowbell. More cowbell. One more. Alright, now we're going to mix this up. Make sure that paint gets in there thoroughly. We don't want to have any of the acrylic unwatered down in the brush. We want to wipe it in here real good, stir it up real good. That dirty black kind of water. And then we are going to paint the entire carving. Whole surface, all of it. And that black is going to seep down into the nooks and crannies and the crevices. And it's going to color those and I won't be able to get it out. And that will provide a little bit of shadow to the depth. It will put a little dimension into the carving that wasn't there before. And it really is a neat effect. It really just sets it apart. So make sure you get into the into the corners, into the crevices, push it in like that, whole thing. And for the flat surfaces, we're gonna take a, uh, a clean washcloth or a clean paper towel and just dab it. You know, I, I, should, I say clean, I shouldn't do this. Oh, oh I got the paint on there. Okay, so <clears throat> when I say clean, what I mean by that is clean. So don't be like me. Use a clean paper towel properly the first time, and uh, you want to try to wipe something else off that you might have messed up. So we're going to redo that uh, shadowing right there. And we'll get our hair dryer out, blow it in there, and uh, it'll dry some of that darker stuff in the crevices for us. Just like so. And there we have it. A completed carving, a grumpy little gnome, bushy beard, beautiful hat. Look at that texture, that darkness to the hat there. It just came out fantastic. And that's what we're looking for. And that's what you can do too. Just take a little time. And uh, you'll notice we spent probably as much time painting this guy as we did carving him to really bring out everything we wanted to. And the money shot. There he is. Everyone, thanks for watching so much. I really appreciate it. Please like and subscribe to the video. And uh, don't forget to hit that notification button. Uh, let me know what you want to see. Um, put a comment down below. And I really appreciate your time. Thank you for watching. And I'll see you guys next time for the next video.